George and I first became friends maybe five, six years ago and uh, was starting up his own game company and said, how would you like to be involved in the music for this game? We were calling it Two at the time, and it was operating on this wonderful principle of a non-speaking protagonist in kind of the Gordon Freeman model, uh, interacting through some kind of ephemeral signals. And as it turned out, it was basically screenshots through like augmented reality glasses with some other character. And of course, for a composer, that jumps right out as appealing because it means that music is going to naturally play a huge role. You have a non-speaking main character and it's a very kind of puzzle mechanics driven game. So George, for better or worse, had a radical openness to the idea of a kind of experimental score. One of the things that was also really fun about this score was that it was aesthetically weird. I remember saying to George, you know, is there anything that I should be thinking about or is there anything that should be kind of guiding me? And, and uh, obviously he and the rest of the team had been working really hard from a writing and a narrative standpoint to put a lot of personality into the character of Amber and into the kind of the world of Bradwell's subterranean lab. And so in accordance with that, I guess it was like, no, do whatever you want. And that's always a dangerous thing to tell a composer. Excellent work. Everything just lit up like a cheap bar on St. Patrick's Day. George, one of his many um, flaws is he has a tendency to go along with my suggestions. You know, in traditional game scoring, it might be typical that I have a kind of ambience or a groove or something like that. And then what happens is, you know, I solve a puzzle and a big melody comes in over top it. Congratulations, you have unlocked the gateway to your potential. So we started saying, well, what if things are proximate or what if things are based around uh, how you're using the SMP or, or things like that so that the score is actually kind of almost physically located in the world, but subjectively. So it would be like a melody fades up as I round this corner in a very overt way, but the rest of the score travels with me like traditional score. It was really fun. It was really unusual. And it was a chance to try a score on a technical level in a way that I, I honestly hadn't really ever done before. The score is built around this very odd combination of solos and electronics, and then quite a lot of pipe organ. There was something very cathedral-esque I just couldn't move away from. I absolutely loved about the game and just kept coming back to again and again and again. In addition to waves and waves of distortion and weird sound and processing. <laughs> As like a as if it was like a you know church organ you can't really sell it on the piano but the theme is this this literal you know doesn't sound like much in this context but very simple
Anyway, it's been an absolute blast. It's a privilege. Uh, working with independent developers that put everything on the line is something I always take as a, as a course of pride and a course of honor because um, it's people who uh, are not compromising on their dreams, people who, who absolutely look at the landscape of games and say, this one doesn't exist, so let's make it. And I just feel so privileged to be part of teams like that. So thank you for checking out the Bradwell Conspiracy. I hope you like it. I hope you like the music. And enjoy. Enjoy.